Hi, Chris Conway here, and uh, as some of you know, this is my 30th anniversary of uh, since I turned a professional musician. And uh, why oh, not? Ta da! Um, but I've been thinking about uh, really how things started, how different things that happened, and having a lot of memories about it all recently. And I thought I'd put some down in a kind of video form of um, rambling videos. Uh, more than one, there's too, much, there's too many different things going on, and I thought it'd be better to do different subjects and um, different genres. Uh, they've all got different stories to tell. And um, I thought in this one I'd start with beginnings. Uh, how I got into, I was going to do how I started my music career, but we could take it all the way back, if you like, uh, to how I started in music. Uh, my earliest music memory as a child, uh, and we came to England on the on a ship. My parents moved the whole family back from the States to England. Uh, my mother was British. They went out there for 14 years. I got born there, and uh, on the way back on this boat, it was the biggest ocean liner at the time, actually, the longest, I think, the SS France. And oh, my father was taken poorly as he was allergic to uh, artichokes and must have got some in something uh, um, obscure, I know. But we, uh, I was left to my own device as a seven-year-old and I was running up all the way down, you know, up and down the gangways in the, where the cabins are. And I remember thinking, I'm making up a tune as I'm doing this. I was being a secret agent or something, uh, as I recall, and I was humming this thing. and. I also think it was quite influenced, or maybe it involved, part of the theme from The Prisoner as well, because my, my mom was English and when we were in America she tried to keep us English by having us watch uh, all the English programs, which usually involved a seven-year-old like me watching The Prisoner. Um, so that was scary. Anyway. <laughs> I can't. Um, but that tune, da -da 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 I think was involved in it. And I think a bit of maybe Pervin Dean or, um, you know, Jimmy Webb's uh, MacArthur Park, you know, da -da 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 whichever place it came from. Da -da 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 I remember that bit too. Anyway, I think there was an element of that. And I was singing this. But I, first time I thought I was writing a tune. Uh, in England, I, um, from that first few years, I wouldn't have said I did any music much, but before too long there was a piano uh, put in my bedroom, and as a teen that became my shuttlecraft, uh, windows drawn, uh, curtains drawn at all times, and I just started picking out tunes, I guess like anyone, any other kid, I'd be listening to the chart show and Lady of Caroline, Lady of Luxembourg. And I became very drawn to chords uh, of a certain kind. And I remember getting, really liking the chords in Barry White songs. I, um, I, I didn't know it was supposed to be sexy music. I just thought it was, he was just a cool dude. But it was really the chords that did it. Um, I don't know if it's going to make any sense. But when anyone tinkers with a piano, you often do a simple shape. Play one gap, play one gap, line, and move those around. Some of them work. That doesn't work, but you find out why, and I got to get interested. And then one day, I added fourth note in the pattern, and I thought, that's that chord I hear in those Barry White songs. In fact, you can play half his songs with those. <laughs> and then I started hearing them in other bits of music. And the four note chord thing, I got into uh, my brother's record collection they were quite a bit older than me, so they had uh, things like Santana, and I really got... And I was trying to sound like the the keyboard player at the time. I, my first records I bought, I think, would have been all Santana records. Um, Caravanserai was the first record I bought, and I bought the subsequent ones, Welcome, Borbaletta, but they were the jazzy ones. And I really liked this keyboard player, Tom Costa, and I started taking his loop and trying to solo. I can do it better now. I would take myself. 
with a little portable tape recorder and try and make the right sounds. And I, I still use some of his licks, especially when I'm playing an organ. And so that was the earliest. Um, I got a band to keep. There was a band at school uh, called Shamir Specter. We put all these mystical names in a hat and drove. Those were the two words which came out, Shamira and Specter. And uh, again, I wrote some songs for that. So that must have been the earliest bit of songwriting I did. And um, again, the songwriting was the very same time of bass, as you might imagine. Uh, thereafter, into getting into my sixth form at school, I started getting into more avant-garde improvised music um, and, uh, and some jazz as well, and trying to work out how does jazz work? How do walking bass lines work? And I got fascinated in that. And slowly, as I said, got into a little uh, avant-garde group uh, a little trio. We just played. We didn't play. We didn't gig or anything. And we were called uh, Unity, I think. That was it. And um, I was got very interested in free improvising and structuring, improvising around some structure and stuff. And that would have been, uh, yeah, about the sixth form. Then at university, I was by then very much into the avant-garde piano. Uh, <laughs> Etc. And I used to play in the old coffee bar club at university, which was a venue that we put on different kinds of music, I suppose, than not commercial stuff that the Ents Committee would put on. So we'd hire the local blues band and various different folk stuff. And, and they, would, I would let, they would let me play a little piano thing of, you know, scraping the strings and the whole works. And I used to go down to the improvised music festivals in London, and um, oh, it was a, it was a big thing. I think one play I was known as the Mad Piano Player, I think. But, <laughs> but either way, um, I did. I got into that. My first ventures into playing outside of the university into town was would have been the Magazine Acoustic Club, which was a pub in town, no longer there. And uh, I, my brother got me into Celtic music. Uh, Alan Stavell. He played Alan Stavell live at Olympia. And they're slightly rocky Celtic with a guitarist. And it wasn't that far from Santana. And I, yes, I did get into that and formed a little Celtic band. We've had a couple of gigs called Universal Spirit, I think. And we played there at the magazine. Uh, Alan Stavell based really but other I started getting things out from the library and Irish things and stuff and but it was largely I was big into Breton music because that was that was Breton music then uh, well my university I was doing chemist chemistry so uh, I uh, I used to go another thing that I did that was very daring the music department proper used to hold lunchtime recitals and I would have to dash from the lab in my lab coat, burst into the lab, when I got a spot there, uh, burst in there with my lab coat. And I used to have my free form compositions with structure, but improv I used to make hieroglyphic type mysticism, mysticism kind of graphic score type things. Uh, and I used to play to them. It was very intimidating and what they thought of me I really don't know. And when I did ask one of the music professors, I just, I did it a few times, I wasn't getting any feedback. And I said, what kind, what do you think? Good or bad? You know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to let me know what you think. And all he said was, hmm, you listen to a lot of Scriabin, don't you? And I hadn't, but I had read about him. And the reason was he had a mystic chord he used in his music. Uh, he passed away around hmm, 1912 or something, 1911. But he wrote this mystic chord, and towards the end of his life, that's all he used. And by chance, that was the same chord I had found. Uh, and that was enough to do in my head. And I, I, I heard about him and read him, but I didn't realize I was sounding like him too, because uh, I still hadn't heard any. Uh, so that was another aside. Uh, where did I go from there? I, after university, I tried teacher training. I wasn't able to do any music at that time because it was so involving. Uh, I didn't fancy teaching, but I had a year out and I took some uh, sitar lessons with the great Taranbir Singh, very lucky and Lester, wonderful player. 
Have I met a sitar player called Carl Peverty who was three years down the line from me and had studied it very hard and I was finding it difficult. I thought if ever I want sitar I'll just get Carl over. So that's what I did and we formed a little duo called the Rain Garden and we started recording. We got some little gigs locally. Uh, it was world music before there was really a place to do world music. It was guitar, sitar mostly and he played some tabla, I played some whistles and slowly we added more instruments and zithers and and uh, then we did start recording which was 1989 which was when I started professionally in music the same year and we went on to play together for another 12 years until he moved away and um, we recorded a lot of things like uh, recordings is another is another subject um, I haven't quite got up to how I started professionally um, but perhaps that's enough for now. That's how I started in music. I'll start another video on uh, my early days uh, professional and how that came about. So um, let me know if you like this rambling and I shall do some more at another time. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye-bye.